Welcome to the show. My name's Toby Salgado, and I'm here to help answer a question that we all have. How do I build my business faster and better? Each week, we're going to dig in and uncover what are some of the smartest minds in real estate are doing and have discovered so that you can implement those tactics in your business today. If you want to get more tips and ideas like the ones we're going to uncover in this episode, I would hope that you do two things. One, go to our site, superagentslive.com, and subscribe to the show on iTunes. And second, download my free ebook called How to Sell. Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. We all know the best kind of referral is one from our sphere or farm, but how do we stay top of mind? Now, most people, they take a three pronged approach, right? They door knock in their farm, they call people and they mail them. Most people fall down by not getting to their people, their sphere, their farm. They don't get them engaging content. And look, you know, sure, we can list them a postcard or we can send them an article that we think is going to be of interest to them. Our new sponsor, Discover Publications, takes that one step further. For just slightly more than the cost of a stamp, Discover Publications creates a completely customized newspaper. Now, they'll go out and they'll curate content, or you can create your own. All of my sponsors are white labeled. Now, I called, prior to having them on the show, I called some of Discover Publications clients. And I talked to this one guy, and he does some interesting things. He'll go out and interview restaurants that are in his farm, in his sphere. He creates a write-up. He, interestingly enough, resells advertising in his own newspaper to his trusted network, whether that's the plumber or the insurance agent. And by the way, this guy has 60% market penetration. He told me the paper has cemented those numbers. If you're interested, go check out discoverpubs.com. Let me know what you think. Today on the show, we're doing something a little bit different. You know, everybody comes on this show and they say, you know what, to be successful, go find yourself a niche, right? That could be through geographic farming. You could have beachfront houses. That could be your niche. Today's guest is completely opposite that. He has a residential division. He has a commercial division and he has an investment division and he is crushing it. So I am thrilled to announce and to have on... Charlie Butler. Charlie, I just I absolutely d- demolished no the intro. No hey, problem. Hey, Charlie, thanks for taking the time out today. Hey, no, no problem, Toby. Thanks for having me. So listen, I, you know, I, I've given the audience just a brief overview of your, your very rich background, but maybe take a minute, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know that uh, you, know, you haven't been in the, in the real estate world for a huge amount of time. Um, and uh, you know, tell us about your business. Um, no, I, uh, actually I started real estate fairly late. I started in, uh, I started in 1999. Uh, I had been in the, uh, I'd, I'd been in the retail industry before that. Uh, I actually managed jewelry stores. And, um, so we, you know, um, started in retail, went and got, started in, in, uh, real estate, excuse me. Uh, you know, got my license and I did kind of did what everybody else did. I just went out and, uh, uh, started, started prospecting and, uh, and started, you know, just selling residential houses. And it was, uh, I mean, it went good from the first year for me. I think I sold by myself. I sold 58 houses the first year, Oh wow! which, uh, uh, which, which was good and, you know, made more money than I ever made in my life. Uh, and, uh, and so that was, that was great. So, you know, I keep that going like that for two, three years. I hire, you know, I bet this about three years. I hire an admin and in during that time, you know, I'm as, as I'm prospecting, I'm meeting investors and, uh, mainly, uh, guys that are, uh, that are single family investors. And so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm selling them some properties and it's, you know, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice sideline. Well, I get introduced by, I, 
I made a, I called a for sale by owner and it was an investor and me and him went to lunch are still friends today. We've done a little business over the years, never that much, but he introduced me to a guy who at the time owned 40 properties still, you know, I mean, it was nice, but nothing tremendous. Um, we started working together and between 2000 and 2007, he built to over 400 properties. Holy and, smokes. and, uh, plus, and that doesn't count the stuff we sold with that. We sold him that he turned around and, um, uh, he turned around and resold that just count. I'm just counting these rentals there. And so that, so, you know, as, as that first started getting going about 2002, I start thinking, hey, I kind of like this uh, investment side. While the price point's lower, I can sell so many properties. Um, and I picked up a couple more pretty good investors since then. Uh, there's no inspections. It's usually cash. And if it's financing, I never have to worry about it. They've got the money. So, uh, so at the end of 2002, I tell my assistant, I had one assistant then, and I said, we're going to go all. We're going to go all out. We're going to we're going to drop residential. And at the time, we did. We went all investment. And uh, my business tanked. Uh, uh, in fact, my broker, who was a good friend, still is a good friend. You know, he's trying to talk to me all year. He's saying, "Man," he said, "You've got to get back." He said, "You cannot do uh, just investors. You can't do just investment property." I said, this is going to work. And obviously my wife wasn't happy. My income being cut in half. All right, right. And that, you know, that didn't go well at home either. And so, uh, about September that, uh, that straight down starts headed back up again. And, uh, by December, I mean, by December, January, we were crushing it. And, uh, we had a huge year in 2003. Um, started hiring people from there. And, um, so as I hired people, we got back in the residential again. And, um, you know, I, I, I hired people for both. And so, you know, that keeps going. And, uh, I've actually, I had one of my residential investors who owned a 32 unit riverfront high rise, 34 unit, I think. And, uh, uh, and he said, hey, if you ever know anybody, I wouldn't mind selling that. And uh, uh, so it turned out I was working with an investor from New York. I kind of I started advertising all over the country by that time. I had investors coming in to Evansville, Indiana, believe it or not, to buy, prop- to buy properties. And uh, so I, uh, uh, I just, uh, uh, he said, if you ever know anybody, so... I turn him on to this guy, and I and I make what at that time was my biggest sale, make a one point eight million dollar sale, and uh, from that, which was, you know, for our area is nice and was a was a was the biggest commission check I'd ever had, and uh, I thought, hmm, I wonder if there's anything to this commercial stuff, and so I uh, this was I think I I think I kind of jumped ahead, but this was about. This was still about 2003, and there was this new thing that I discovered called LoopNet. And, uh, you know, nobody, they didn't have many subscribers in. They weren't huge like they are today. So I go to a client of mine, and I said, and I said to him, who had another apartment complex, I said, let me list your apartment complex. And he said, we've talked about this before, and I've told you I want too much money. You could never get it. 40-unit apartment complex in Evansville, Indiana, town of 150,000 people. And I said, well, Dave, what do you want? And he said, well, I want 950000 Now, for those in bigger areas, that sounds cheap. At the time, yeah. Yeah. that sounded completely ridiculous. Huh. Okay. And so he said, but you can list if you want to. So I listed strictly the idea of putting on this new thing I saw called LoopNet and seeing what it would do. I had three full price offers within two weeks, people who had never seen the property. And of course, all from California, we sell it, we sell it full price cash. 
and that that got us taken off. So we we took off there in the multifamily. Uh, we expanded out into into uh, net lease properties after that, and uh, and that's that's really our two main specialties. But I've got you know there's two of us that work on that. We've got people that just work on the investment side of the prop uh, of it, and we've got people that just work on the residential side. Okay, <clears throat> there's a lot there, Charlie. So so I understand now. I understand now why you are in. You know, so you start in residential, you're prospecting, however, you know, whether it's on the phone or knocking doors and, you know, let's say you're knocking doors. I don't know. I, you know, we can... I never, I never knocked on doors. So, so, I mean, I'm just beyond that. Okay, that's, yeah. that's great. So, I mean, when you say prospecting, what you're just calling your sphere of influence? I would, you know, I, I call my sphere, but here, here was the thing. I didn't know anybody. Um, so, um, uh, my first year of those 58 houses when I started, yeah. Um, uh, one of them was, I know everybody always says, we'll start with people, you know, one, I, for some reason, and this was not smart on my part, but I decide, well, I'm not going to use my friend. I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to go out and, uh, I'm going to do this. The only person I knew at all. And I didn't even know her really was my wife's secretary's mother. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, the, that's how tenuous the, the connection was of those, that first year, those first 58, uh, she was the only one that I had any kind of connection with everybody. I go to my, I go to my broker when I start and who was a, who was a big producer himself and still is today. I said, Wayne, how do you know, you know, how do I get leads? And he said, well, when I started, I called expired listings and it worked. Mm. And so I just started calling expired listings. Now we we're in a market average sale price at one twenty one thirty. Yeah. And uh, so I'm calling people from like eighty to one fifty, and man, I'm listing houses. I, I mean, it, it's going great. I'm thinking this is fantastic. You know, I'm getting buyers off of that. And so my broker comes by one day and he said, "Man, it looks like you're doing great with those listings." But he says, "How come you never list anything over one fifty? I said, and I remember, I'm brand new at the time, and he says, and I said, well, Wayne, I said, you know, people like you, and I named a couple other experienced big producers, I said, you guys got those $300,000 people locked up, and everybody's calling them. He goes, no, he said, you don't understand. He said, you're calling the people everybody calls. Everybody's intimidated to call those people, and nobody calls them. And so we started calling some, you know, some of the bigger ones, and, you know, they were... They were much easier, actually. Amazing, man. And and I don't want to go down this hole right now, but but I hear that all the time. I hear that all the time when people, you know, with people that I coach, right? I'm like, hey, let's go target those seven figure million dollar properties. And they're like, oh man, you know, in that, uh, you know, that neighborhood or that uh, that resort, you know, these two agents have them all locked up. And I'm like, they don't. You think they do? But hold on, let's not get there right now. Here's so so let me just let me just unpack your timeline so you so you start you know when you started you started at residential you started right. where you knew and you started calling expires and it works for you then you stumble upon this investor right so you stumble upon this investor he's got 40 houses and all of a sudden you start working with him and you turn his 40 houses into 400 houses now here's why that why that uh is appealing to you and to pretty much everybody out there is because instead of making one phone call finding a you know finding a prospect and one phone call, one person, one sale. <clears throat> when right. you work with an investor, it's much more like working with a, you know, it's B2B instead of B, you know, business to consumer, right? You, you meet this one guy, you develop a relationship, and all of a sudden you have his stream, his book of business. So, <clears throat> so for you, you're like, okay, I'm going to double down on this. And then all of a sudden you sell, uh, you know, you're selling $150,000 houses. You sell a $1.8 million multifamily, and you're like, Okay, you know, to me, Charlie, now certainly you are a very successful guy. It's worked for you. But, you know, again, you were sort of anti what everybody else is. I mean, this is what you were doing sort of following, you know, a bright, shiny object syndrome, right? You see something, it looks like it's going to work, and all of a sudden you, you go to run towards that. Is, like, is this just because you're good? I mean, you know, or did is this some of this is just luck? Um, some, uh, you know, some uh, of it, uh, you know, it's a little, it's a little bit of both. I, you know, I, I, you know, I do, I do think that you know, I worked hard, and 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 I'm not, you know, 
not going to be have false modesty. I, I, I know I've got talent for this. Okay? Yeah. So right. that's, um, uh, but uh, you know, yes, yeah, so part of it, part of it was being in the right place at the right time. But there was another part, and you know, we kind of stopped in 2003. But if you go forward, you know, if someone if someone watched my progression, they watched me move in and out, and I was, you know, for. For most of the time, I was right. I was fortunate. They watched me move in and out of, okay, we're going to go heavier on commercial right now because this is the time to go. We're going to go heavier on the investors right now. Hmm. Or we're going to get real heavy. Residential residential is still a good piece of my business, but it ne- it never got back to be the focus again. Okay? Interesting. Uh, it, it, really, it really was investors and uh and commercial from from there on out, and so we were, you know, uh, we were fortunate. And you mentioned a minute ago, Toby, about you know the the million dollar properties. You know, it's just you know you get million, three million, four million, whatever. Those people overall are easier to work with than the eighty thousand dollar house. You know, that's uh, why. There's why would you say that, Charlie? Well, there's, um, this is, well, on the commercial side, it's, it's easy because, um, this is, this is all business. There is not, there's no emotion involved. Right. Right. And you get that, uh, $80,000 first time home buyer, uh, or whatever the number is in, in your particular market. There's a lot of emotion involved there. Yeah. And, uh, and it's tough to take that out and, you know, the home inspection, I mean, let's say, you know, let's face it, there's times if, if you just read a home inspection, you never, and you were never at the house, you know, you think you might as well burn the house down, right. you know, yeah. and, uh, nothing against the home inspectors cause there's some great ones out there. Um, but, uh, so and and people and people just get more emotional on that level, and it's true with residential too. You know the um, the people that are buying the half million dollar houses are are easier to work with, and it's usually and the financing. You know the financing on the higher end is easier. You know it's you know you've usually got somebody you know on on a lot of those houses that we're talking about on the lower end. I mean, they're just barely qualifying, right? You know, and you know, it's it, it's not the case on the other end. So, so again, so let's 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 talk about emotion for a second. But there's there's just so much your story that I you know I I, I want to you know try to attack it in a systemized fashion. But if we talk about emotion, right? So you you're working with with two groups who have no emotion, right? So if if I'm an investor, um, and and look, and that's my background, Charlie. I've, I've I, millions and millions of dollars of properties I've bought and sold. Um, right. And I don't, it's just a deal to me. I don't care. I don't, I, I don't, you know, it's just do the numbers work. So there's no emotion in working with an investor. And if you, on the commercial side of it, again, that's, that's a, that's an investment a piece of property. So, you know, it becomes just numbers is how important is that for people to, to try to work with people that are not emotional and, and how, it, you know, cause it's sounding to me like if people that you work with are not emotional, it makes the deal easier on, 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 in every regard. It makes it, it makes it it makes it so much easier uh, because uh, first off, they're going to let you do your job. Right. Uh, they're going to let you go in. They're going. They're they're usually going. You know. They're also. You know. A lot of these deals. You know. They. You know. They want us to go in first. They want us to analyze the property. Um, you know. I've got. I mean. I've got million dollar deals I, that I've sold out there uh, in you know, in other parts of Indiana and Kentucky, especially where I'm licensed, is clients have never seen the property. Mm-hmm. You know, they, uh, uh, you know, they pay me, they, you know, me or someone on my team uh, goes over there, you know, we uh, we take a video of the property, we take a video of the area, and um, and send it back to them, and then, you know, it's either, and of course they're looking at the numbers the whole time anyway, so it's either yes, that'll work for me, or or no, it won't. And there's you know, and it's it it makes it it makes it so much easier because 
the hard part with a lot of guys, if there is a hard part, I, would, I don't think this is hard, but the hard part with the guys with no emotions is the guys that have no niche. Because you get the guys, and I've got one who has been a fabulous client. He's actually my largest client. Hmm. And uh, who says, just bring me deals and make me money. Right. And he is into everything imaginable. You know, um, you know uh, banks, liquor stores, restaurants, hotels. Um, Holy smokes. Ice machines. <laughs> uh, you know, the ice machines you see at the convenience stores. Uh, he owns one of the big companies that all, you know, and I, yeah, I could go on, you know, uh, just, uh, commercial or, uh, multifamily real estate, single family real estate and, and on and on. But his thing is, he said, you know, if, if it makes money and if it's going to make money long term, you know, he's in. And, but everybody that I've seen, that has been successful. And here's a good test. The guys that survived 08 and 09, yep. you know, when everything crashed, those were the guys that had no emotion, you know, about it. They, a lot of, uh, a lot of guys that went in and thought, okay, we'll make our money. We'll make our money. We're okay. We're paying too much for it. We know, but we like it and we'll make our money when we sell it. You know, as Toby, you, she said, you're an investor, as you know, you don't make your money when you sell it. You make you know, your money when you buy it. You make your money when you buy it. Yeah. If, you know, and so those guys, those guys that took the backwards approach to it, uh, a lot of them didn't survive a late no nine. Yep. Yeah. And it's unfortunate, but, uh, but the guys with no emotion that could just go in there and, and turn it. And actually I, I'll give you, I'll give you another quick example Got an, a, a, I got an investor, single family, uh, strict, almost a strictly rehabs. He may be on 50 rentals. He calls me March of 09, and we all know how ugly that was, you know, right then. And, you know, that oh, was. Oh, yeah. We, Lehman, we, Lehman we, failed. Banks are failing. Everybody's scared. I mean, the, the world is melting. Yeah. You know, stock market's at 6,800 or something like that. I right, mean, down from 11,000. So. And here's this one guy, and you know, this is this is, and I, you know, these are these are the guys that have got it, maybe, or just, you know, they they think that he calls me, he said, look, he said, I want you to go out, and I want you to find all the houses, and like remember, he's a single family rehab, he said, uh, I want you to find all the houses you can find, and I want to buy them, he said, it's the only stuff I can resell. I said, Dave, nobody's buying anything right now. Yeah. He said, yeah, he said, but we're talking about buying right. He said, yes, they will. He said, because we can buy them right, I can price them right. And he went out, I don't know, in the space of a few months, we did, you know, 30 or he did, he, he put a couple crews together, did 30 or 40 rehabs, and, I mean, they, they sold, every one of them sold. Yep. And uh, uh, he had, but he he'd been able, to, the secret was, he bought it right. He was able to rehab it real nice, and still keep it nice and make a nice profit. And he made he if if he were on here right now, he would tell you, oh nine was one of his best years. Uh, well, I'll t- I'll tell you a really quick story. And I'll get back to your story. <clears throat> um, late oh nine. Um, uh, I found a deal. It, uh, 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 I'm in San Diego, up north of me is Sacramento, a little a little bedroom community outside of Sacramento. A builder building a community. He owed the bank seventy three million dollars. So so, and it it just like he could you know he couldn't get any more money. What whatever he went chapter eight. Uh, I was able me and a friend, well me and me, four people, we were able to buy that that property that note. Uh, a $73 million note we bought for $3.2 million. And, and again, oh, wow. And, and I never even saw it. I knew what it was. It was, it, was, uh, it was 525 fully developed lots. It was like 67 houses. Most of them were built. Some, some needed, you know, needed some finishing. And then another 420 paper lots. So we knew, right, if, the, you know, if they owed $73 million and it made sense to, to the banks then, if I could buy it for three, uh, you know, right, we made money the day we closed on that deal. <clears throat> but so... So I get that. Let, let's, let me back up for a second. <clears throat> what you said earlier, Charlie, you said 
hey, you know, with these investors, a lot of times they don't even see the property. We go in first and we analyze the property. Now, now I want to, there's a danger in that. And I, and, and, and I want to get to how to find these guys, but here's the danger. And I, I've turned a lot of agents, especially during that time period, you know, late 09, 2010, when nobody's buying anything, I turned them into just scouts for me, right? Because I said, hey, right. I, I was a lot like that guy. You know, I, this, this is kind of what I'm looking for. Go out, and if it makes sense, I'll buy it all cash, close in 10 days, no questions asked. So I turned a bunch of these people into scouts. How, how does, I mean, again, that's a trap, would you agree with that, Charlie? For a lot of people, that's a trap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's. Uh, uh, you know, you've got. Yeah, I think you've got to be working with somebody that uh, has a high level of trust in you. I mean, you've developed a relationship there because you know you don't. You definitely when you're doing stuff when when you're working that way, you know, and when you're working with that much trust, uh, it needs to be the right person. Right. Well, and uh, well, so I uh, I had three people that I was working with, and this is what I did. Uh, I literally never looked at a house until I had it under contract. I I gave everybody a check, um, a, a signed check, and I said, "Go out, put my name on the contract. I don't care what you do. If you th- if it pencils out to you, and I'd look at the numbers before the numbers they gave me beforehand, and I'd say, okay, that's fine. Go make an offer. This is what I want to offer. They'd offer it. They'd sign my name to the contract. They'd get in a contract and say, hey, Toby, we got this deal." And only then would I get in my car and go look at it. And there, and there's lots of times where I'd say, okay, look, we're not. I don't. That's this. It's not right. It's, there's too much work here. Right. So, how Charlie, you've done a great job at going. I mean, finding these investors. That is a struggle for most people. You know, Charlie, you were in your city and you said I didn't know anybody. There's lots of people that are in that situation, feeling like they don't know anybody, much less some guy who's got a pile of cash who wants to 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 go buy money. I mean, go buy go go buy houses, property. Right. How do you go? How do, how did you do it, Charlie? How did you go out and and not only find these people, but then develop relationships with these people? Well, totally. Part of it, part of it was networking. You know, we go to the, you know, we go back to the story. The guy I was telling you where we took. You know, he had 40 houses within less than seven years. He had 400. Yeah. But he and I started having breakfast every morning. Got it. And uh, we had started having breakfast in a restaurant that was owned by uh, the guy I was just telling you about that, uh, uh, that where I just, you know, uh, the guy who just would send me, you know, would tell hey, the ice machine go guy. look at this deal. Yeah. You know, if it, you know, take a video, let me see it, and, you know, we'll – We'll rock and roll if it works. And, you know, but the thing was, I mean, a lot of networking. Um, I had, and once, once the word got out, you know, hey, this guy, and, and just because they were doing well, suddenly I, I kind of got that reputation. Hey, this guy can find stuff nobody can find. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it, it, you know, it wasn't necessarily that. It was, you know, I was telling them about it. I know, you know, some agents were, you know, they had their buddy, they were talking about they're buying it themselves. And I made, I saw early on, I said, you know, I can't buy these things because it's going to be a conflict of interest and I'll lose, you know, I'll lose a lot of these guys' business. So, you know, I only own a few rentals myself. I, I was never able to get into real estate the way I would have wanted to, at least on a local level because of that. Mm. And, and, uh, and so then I, as, as things changed a little bit, we did more commercial. Um, I started, I started right. And I just, after LoopNet, I tested this out. I, uh, uh, I took out an ad in the, uh, I took out like a three or four line classified ad in the LA times and my phone blows up. You know, I just, I would highlight one property. Did the same thing in San Jose and the Mercury News. Uh, actually, I can in in your San Diego paper. Yeah. Uh, who's uh, Union Leader? I think is uh, that U- it. Union Tribune. Union Tribune. Yeah. Um, I sold a and I can't remember. The, well, I wouldn't say the name anyway. But uh, I sold a twenty four unit building to them, who they called me off an off an ad, and those things were costing me like 
three hundred bucks a week or, or a weekend or something. So and hold hold on. So so the ad you're just talking about it was uh it was, you're talking about just a little tiny ad. You're not talking about like a, a quarter. You're talking about just a little tiny. No, I'm talking about class. I'm talking about a classified class ad in the yeah. real estate section, a three four. And I would I would feature one property. Now remember our prices, what what uh, what what they were seeing in there. I mean our prices in L A. And San Diego and San Jose, that sounded dirt cheap. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, in fact, you know, I would have guys call me and say, you know, uh, you know, about, say, a small apartment complex, it was half a million dollars. And like a a 20 unit, he said, you know, I don't want anything in a bad area like that. I said, well, I said, this is in a really nice area. Well, it can't be for if it's twenty <laughs> units for half. I'm, right. you know, in Los Angeles, you know, and and you know, and so I said, well, it, and so we, in fact, we actually some of those guys, a lot of those guys had to use their lend, had to use lenders that uh, that we worked with out here because their lenders in California thought these have got to be bad properties right. at I these prices. Yeah, you know, and you know, you, you remember we're going up. You know, at the time, we're going up 30% a year at that time. And, yep. you know, it was, it was crazy. So, so yeah, we, we had that. But, yeah, these were just small classified ads. In fact, we're, we're getting ready to do that again. We haven't done it much in the last couple of years. Get, and uh, we're, we've picked up some nice listings here recently, and we're getting ready to start that again. And also, besides the print, we're going to do, we're going to do online yeah. And we're also going to do the uh, uh, the Chinese and Korean version of the paper. Interesting. That is very interesting, Charlie. So, okay. Let me break in here with a message from our sponsor. Our sponsor, Discover Publications, will create a customized, branded, 12-page newspaper that will be sent out to your farm and sphere. Now, this paper is cheaper than you think. For slightly more than the cost of a stamp, you can start sending out curated content and always stay top of mind. Never lose a deal again because that prospect just happened to forget that you were in real estate or misplaced your number. Go check them out at discoverpubs.com. There's so much stuff I want to ask. I want to ask you about you know what you did in 2009, um, but before that, Today, right? Today's a, you know, look, if we go back to, you started in 99, that you started at the beginning of, the, of a boom, right? Of the boom that lasted right. until 07. Right. Um, you know, and really, if you were an agent at that time, or if you were an investor, you really couldn't, I mean, you could, you know, you could buy something, and, you know, a month later, you know, it was worth 30 grand more than, than you know, you're making a thousand bucks a day. So, so I kind of understand how you were successful during that time period. What about today, right? The world is different today. Lending is much uh, more, you know, money's harder to come by. What if somebody wants to follow model Charlie Butler? What could they do? I mean, what would, tell us where they would start to sort of model your career. Well, I, I think, you know, as, as you and I were talking off the air, Toby, I've, I, I've been told by a pretty successful broker that I've got a non-duplicatable model. But I don't think that's true. I, I think that... Uh, if somebody wanted to do it today, uh, first off, it's you're going to have to do it different because um, because of financing. And if you started out the way I did it on the investment side, um, there's a whole. I mean, used to, you know, in in that time, you could uh, you could buy a house for out here. You could buy a house in. We'll just say a an average below average neighborhood without getting into any legal stuff here. Okay. You know, so, sure. uh, uh, $20,000, uh, put another 20 into it and sell it for 79, nine. Hmm. Yeah. Now. So basically doubling your money. Uh, the, uh, a lot of those people that in that 80,000 down range, um, they're, you know, there's no financing products for them anymore. Right. Uh, as we as we know back then, there was all kinds of no money down, pro, you know, uh, stated loan pro, uh, programs, uh, all kinds of stuff that is gone away. So that part of the market's gone away. But there are a lot of investors. It, there, are, there are probably it seems like there are as many investors as ever wanting either go in, 
rehab. You never, you rarely ever hear me say the term flip because I, for, I, I, I've been doing this long enough when flip was a bad word. Yeah. Hmm. And, and I can remember when, you know, the government looked at that as, uh, a, a different way than what we think of it today. Got it. Okay. Uh, but, uh, so re, rehab properties and, and you got guys, got a lot of guys in rentals right now. What's changed for us is, uh, we get guys from around the country anymore, just like we always did. And that's coming back big for us. But we get a different kind of investor now. We don't get the uh, uh, we don't get the guys that his house was worth. Um, and you'll be familiar with this being from California, Toby. His house was worth three hundred thousand dollars when he bought it fifteen years ago. It's worth a million five now. Yeah, yeah. And so we and don't he's get got those a guys. million dollar line of credit on it. Yeah, he's you know, yeah he's got all that equity in there, pulling that equity out putting big down payments down. We get we get a lot of the guys uh we get guys with a lot of cash. You know. Um that's you know uh there's a there's a lot of people that set out oh four oh five oh six. You know, they just thought, you know, it was too much, you know, that things were going up too fast. And, you know, they took and since probably since two thousand ten really you know, they've taken advantage of some deals. And uh, so we're, we get more of that. We get more groups coming in looking for, we, you know, we used to never, it was rare. And, I mean, we were with people from California, especially the West Coast. It seemed like that got to be our niche. Um, we were probably from 04 to 06, we were with them three weekends a month. You know, we had somebody here. And I can only think of one group that didn't buy but you're getting like larger groups. You're also getting the equity funds coming in. Yep. Um, you know, we, we represent a couple of them. Um, you know, this is still really not their thing. Um, but you know, they'll wind up in Evansville when, you know, they're doing a billion dollar deal and they got to take some stuff to, to get the stuff they really want. And we know we're, we know the property we got is our throw in stuff, but you know, we're still, we're still fine with that. We we've been able to establish some good relationships that way. That's helping us in some other areas too. So, um, sorry, but that, yeah, and we're, we you know, we we veered off into student housing and, and you know, do a lot of different directions. A lot of different stuff. So again, if somebody, I know you, I know that you you know there's there's somewhat some non duplicatable stuff with with what you've done, but you know somebody can kind of follow your path. Could they, you know, instead of looking for that, I, I totally agree with you that, you know, that's what we saw in, in 2010, 2011. We started to see hedge funds that could, you know, stock market was still doing terrible. They couldn't make money anywhere. So people were going out and raising money, raising those little funds, $5 million, $10 million, And that's what killed the, 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 for lack of a better word, the flip market here in San Diego is, you know, when I was doing it, you know, I wouldn't, I, you know, I, I'd wanted to make it 40 grand to 100 grand on every deal I did. And then it got to where the, what was the meat that was there was like 20. And I was like, I'm not willing to, to take the risk for, for 20 grand, but a, a hedge fund was. So, right. so, is that maybe an avenue? You know, could you know an agent out there that says, "Hey, I want to work with investors." You know, I number one go out and I've identified a good property, right? You got to find a deal. You got to come to me with a deal. So somebody goes out and finds something that they believe is a deal. They they do all the analysis on it. You know, could they literally start calling? You know, uh, you know, identifying these funds and start calling them and saying, "Listen, I have this deal, and this is what I do." Is that viable? Do you think for someone out there? You know, I. <laughs> That's that's possibly viable. Uh, uh, still, you know, I mean, it, there are still only yeah. When you're talking about the five ten million dollar funds, yeah, there's all kinds of those you can find. But you know, I'm you know when when you get talking about you know, I'm talking more about Calibers. the Blackstones and the Starwoods yeah. and you know, America's Home for Rent people like that. Uh, you're gonna you're you're almost gonna have to go into the back door. You're gonna have to find. Which we've got a contact with, you know, with one of their with one of their asset management companies, you know, uh, to you know to get to them, and uh, uh, that was, and we developed some good relationships that way. Now, you know, of course, as has been as we've seen lately, you take Blackstone for example. I think they're down to five markets now that they're buying. 
Um, you know, Starwood is in Europe now because Europe's going through, you know, the same thing uh, that we went through in 08 and 09. Hmm. And so they're, you know, they're, you know, star, you know, uh, you know, I, I sent, uh, I sent a, a, a large deal, uh, about a, about a $34 million deal that looked good to my Starwood contact the other day. And, you know, he's, he was like, you know, it's, it's fine, but it's, it, but he said, we're not buying much in the U S cause we can buy so much more in Europe right now. Right. And for look, you know, if you talk about those kinds of names, you know, Blackstone or Star Wars or, or, you know, working with CalPERS or those are giant. You know, if people are feel intimidated trying to sell, you know, in your market, remember you said people were scared of calling the three hundred thousand dollar houses. Yeah. People are scared of calling the, you know, calling on the, you know, one million dollar. They're not going to call a Blackstone. Or, I mean, that's just crazy. Um, I mean, just the people's mindset is, is, you know, they just don't have that, you know. Okay, so let's so in cracking the. But you, but, but you know, you know, some of the most fun I've had is and and forget about the money I've made off of it. Like, I mean, yes, you, you know, uh, the Starwood guys. You know, I, you know, before I met him, I was so intimidated. You know, we had a tremendous time together, and still do. Yeah, I mean, look, people are people. You know, that's yeah, and and you know, and a lot of people that are in sales, they you know, or haven't had success. They they cannot wrap their minds around that. They you know they think somebody who who has a five million or ten million dollar net worth is like not regular, which yeah. they, you know they are. Yeah, and uh, uh, you know you look at uh, and, and but it but it also with those guys it and they take it all you know we're talking about investors with no emotion, but you you take to a level of like the people we've been talking about on the hedge and equity fund side, I mean, you get all the information to them, they plug it into their model, and they don't need to look at the property. If the information you send them works, yep. you know, they'll do it. If it don't work, it doesn't matter what you say, how nice that property is, whatever. Yep. They don't care. Yep. You know, it, didn't, it didn't work in their model. It's green light or, you know, go or no go. That's it. it, it, it that's exactly right, Tony. So, so, Charlie, again, this, this show is, you know, I, I, what my goal for this show is, you know, we really want to help people, you know, number one, build their businesses, but also, you know, work on their mindset, you know. Um, and so we're kind of touching on all that stuff right now. We've never really had, we, we talk to a lot of residential people. You're sort of the first person to come on that has a background in commercial. So, and I have had people say, Hey, Toby, go and find some, some commercial guys. So I I don't know. I don't even know what, what question to start off with, but you know, is there, there's lots of competition in the real estate market. Um, is there less so in, in commercial? Um, there is, there is less in commercial, but the advantage that, and since it sounds like, sounds like your audience is probably more residential guys. Yeah. And one thing, one thing that uh, if I that if I was a residential guy, that well, I'd look in commercial because, uh, and I want the commercial guys to excuse me that are hard workers out there, but commercial guys are lazy. Interesting. And, I mean, they're they're five day a week people. Uh, they uh, uh, they stop at five o'clock, and uh, and they also. Where residential and and it sounds like I'm slam all and I'm not. I mean I'm I'm talking about a lot that I've dealt with, low. But the residential uh, and they don't they don't do the marketing like we do. I mean I market these things the, just like the way I would a residential property, and it's uh, you know I spend money on them just like I would a residential property, and you know I see so many guys just go put a sign up and you know. Maybe throw it on loop net, and that's you know, and and they're done. Right. You know, and they hope it sells. Right. Um. So so let's okay. Let's talk about commercial for a second and what that is. Right. So you can have strip malls, you can have stores, you can have multifamily. Just give us an overview of of what commercial is. Right. It's like help help put a box around it so people can understand it. Yeah, you know, that's that's a tough question to answer because just as you said, and and we can expand it so many other areas. It is. You know, it is everything from, uh, you know, uh, multifamily, net lease properties, uh, sh- uh, shopping center, and things like that, you know, the, you know, 
net lease properties, multifamily, shopping centers. They're pretty straightforward. They're, they're pretty easy to understand. And, um, you know, you get in stuff like, uh, uh, you get in stuff like industrial. And I don't know why. And told me I'm going to tell you, don't ask me a question about industrial because <laughs> I've never been able to wrap my head around it, okay? Okay. Uh, it's just a, uh, it's, it's, it's probably not a different animal, but, uh, I've got that mental block with it, huh. with industrial. And, uh, so I'm, uh, that's one thing I've never been good at and just, you know, and, and I refer it out in anything that I get, uh, actually, you know, we're working on, um, in fact, my analyst is, you know, I've got a call when we get off here to make. Uh, we're working on some farm ground for some clients from Florida, which, uh, just to tell you, you know, it's, it'll be, uh, it'll probably be a 3.5 to $4 million deal. Nice. You know, and, um, uh, we just, you know, we're trying to come up with a good per acre price right now. Now, I know that's probably not true, but to me, that's commercial. You know, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that, that is, uh, that's revenue producing property. Right. Um, so, so again, if somebody if somebody says, "Man, I, I love Charlie's story," you know, I'm going to outwork uh, all those other guys out there because they're lazy. They only work nine to five and Monday through Friday. How like t- like how do they go about it, Charlie? I mean, what where should you, they start? Should they go start, you know, um, uh, pulling property tax records for shopping centers and and call, like how do how would somebody get into crack this this commercial market? First, the first thing I would do would be I, you know, uh, you're gonna uh, you're gonna have to like, you know, you have to like work with investors, and you're probably gonna have to start with, uh, you know, obviously, you can, as you said, you can go to tax record, track tax records, you can go to the assessor, wherever you want to go to, you know, however it is in your area, to find the people that own these properties, but you know what, uh, it is. It is very much, you know, uh, a good old boys and girls club, mm. you know, and uh, it's uh, you've got to prove yourself to get in there, and uh, you, you know, you're probably unless you know somebody that can get you in the door, you're probably going to take some deals to show that you're serious, that you're just not, you know, you're just not looking to list their properties because let's face it, most of these guys like that, you know. Uh, they don't, they don't have as high opinion of realtors as what we've got of ourselves. Right. Okay. Yep. They, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they think we're over, they think we're overpaid. Um, they, they think we, we make a lot for not doing a lot. Um, you know, they're, they're good guys, but you take them deals, you prove you want to work with them yep. and, uh, that you're serious about this. And that's when, and we're, especially when we're talking on the investment commercial side, uh, you know, there's, you got guys out there that, you know, you, you kind of, you don't prove that or, or you, you know, you tell them you're going to be loyal or you're going to, you're going to do this and you don't do it. There's not going to be a second chance. I agree, man. And that's, and, and that's what I said earlier. I said, Hey, you know, fine, you know, go out for me, right. Go out and find a deal and bring it to me. And, and, and all of a sudden you're, you know, now I'm going to feel that you have value. Is there a way, I mean, so look, this goes back to what you said earlier and what you did, right? You networked, you had breakfast with this guy every day and it just right. so happened. It was in a restaurant of the guy of a different guy. And we have to start wrapping up here. And I, and I wish we had more time, but um, where could people start, you know, there's lots of places to network, but where do you think you can, f- what's the best place? I mean, how do people go out and network in the right pool? Oh man. That's, you know, that's it's a you hard know, question. I know. I mean, I'm asking that, 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 is, that is a hard question. You know, uh, I, I know, I, I know I fell into some luck. I, you know, I called the right for sale by owner sign. Um, you know, but as far as, as answer your question, I mean, uh, uh, chamber, you know, chamber of commerce events, um, you know, if, if you're a golfer, yeah. the country club, I have, you know, something, my wife, my wife, she used to get mad at me. Uh, she'd say, you spent all afternoon on the golf course. And, uh, she said, well, she said, wasn't a very productive day. I said, no, I only sold about $4 million of property. <laughs> today. You know, 
because you know Take you know that. how I go. You're standing you're standing out there, and you and I always play with investors, always. And they're and oh, hey Charlie, I've been meaning to call you. That property over on one two three Main Street. Hey, how much is that? And tell me something about that. And I say, oh, Charlie, that reminded me. I I want and you know how it goes, and yeah. it goes, you know. And so pretty soon I've. Uh, uh, you know, you, you've, you've got that whole thing going. In fact, those quick story, those, those three investors, out, there's three, inv- I played with different ones, but three regular big investors I played with. And they had a rule. Everybody except me had to turn their phones off on the golf course. And, and the, but the only calls I could take were from other agents or, or, or someone if it had to do with their deals. You know, if it had to do with their, if it had to do with their deals, I could take the call but anybody else, I'd tell them I'd call them back. You know? <laughs> right. That is so, right. And the rest of them had to have their phones off. If the phone rang, the agreement was when they come to the next water hole, they threw their phone in the water. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you're not going to turn. So let me – real quick, and, and again, we have to start wrapping up. I wonder if, in terms of networking, in terms of building relationships, I wonder if somebody – this is kind of maybe a back way, right? So if they went and in their city found, like, the big uh, HVAC guys, right, the, the people who – you know, these companies who work on – uh, um, the their conditioning systems, <clears throat> you know, yes. for these, you know, so maybe if you go in there and start to develop relationships with those guys, those guys know the, you know, the owner. Right? If it's a, a smaller owner, um, so maybe working through the trades, you can then get intros to the to some of these guys, and to, to find a deal, and then to go out and take find an investor. That's a great. That's a great idea, Toby, and and I. I'll tell you what I did as when I very first started the business, this was, this was on the residential side and you could, you could duplicate this on the commercial side. I went and I called one mortgage brokers mm, and, nice. and I said, Hey, I said, look, if you got some people that are pre-approved that don't have a realtor, I'd love to work them. And, uh, and I'll tell you what I said, I'll do everything I can to see that deal comes back to you. Right. And I, I developed some great relationships that way and did a lot of business at the start. They're going to give you the crap deals, but they're pre approved and that's okay. That gets, that gets you in the door with yeah. them. Yep. And, uh, and, and you go on from there and you could do the same thing by calling on commercial, by calling on commercial lenders. I love it. And then look, the other thing too, is, you know, these title guys out there, they, they tend to know like everything, you know, so oh, they, yeah. they, maybe yeah. take into your, you know, go form a relationship with some of the title guys out there and. You know, go have the, take them to lunch because they, you know, they might have a, some inside track on what's happening. Anybody like anybody like that that is, you know, anybody's a, uh, title uh, appraisers have been good sources for mm. me. A couple of, yeah, um, you know, there, you know, uh, a couple of appraisers that, that we use a lot. They say, hey, you ought to talk to so and so. You know, he's been, you know, he's bought this and he's bought that. You know, awesome, and, Charlie. Hey, man, you have dropped nuggets. Uh, all the way through this. I love it. Here's my last question I ask everybody, especially guys like you who just you have such a rich and varied career. Here it is. I am an inspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy right now? Uh, are, are, are you going to be a residential agent at the start? Um, yeah. So let's say yeah. Meaning a real estate agent. That by was Gary easy. Keller. Yeah, that was easy. That was easy. Uh, I need to start eliminating that book because that's I, I get it too much. Well, and um, you know, as w- you and I off air were talking about Mark Spain, you know, the top producer in the country, and I just had Mark in for a panel, and uh, uh, Mark got that que- Mark got the question, the top three books, and he said, "Media real estate agent, the one thing." And the E Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. There you go. I love that E Myth. Revi- that's a great one. Um, that's a great one. Yeah. And f- what, real quick, a fourth one that if I could add is I think you mentioned him earlier, Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. How can you? That that is that is part of the stable. I mean, that should be the corner. Those two books, uh, uh, Millionaire Agent and uh, Napoleon Hill, Thinking Grow Rich, should be like the cornerstone of your library. Hey, I agree, Toby. <laughs> Charlie, thank you so much for coming on the show. I, I, I really appreciate it. Where can people uh, where can people find you? And and listen, I, I encourage all my audience when they hear a, a great episode like this to reach out and say thank you to you. So uh, maybe your Twitter handle or where can people reach out and find you, Charlie? Um, I'm you know I'm I'm on Facebook. Just ask Charlie Butler, 
and or you can go to uh, charliebutlerteam.com or um, you know if call my office even at uh, I uh, I'm one I'm one of the I'm one, I'm the majority owner of the Keller Williams office in Evansville Indiana and it's eight one two four two two four zero nine six and um, I appreciate you having me on Toby hey thank you that's my uh, I'm the guy who benefited and so did my audience. So thanks a lot, Charlie. Thanks. See you, bud. Let's go. Yeah.